Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing how we can actually do structured locking inside our .NET Web API. We're going to be utilizing Serilog, configuring it, and see how we can actually optimize it in order for us to get the best lock output that we can. I'm Mohammed, and if you'd like to learn more about .NET, AWS, and Azure, make sure you subscribe and like this video. It will really help the channel. Now, let's get started. So what I have here is I have a sample web application. And basically what it does, it has a simple web controller, which is basically the template that comes out whenever we're trying to create a new web application. And I have a program.cs, which is basically out of the box with no specific customization. So what I want to do is, in order for me to start utilizing Siri log, before we actually do anything, I just want to see the current implementation of the logs and see how it's going to be enhanced. So as we can see here, this is my controller and this is the action that I want to execute. And if I click on execute, we get the information. And if I go back here, we can see I got the out of the box logging that Microsoft provide for me. Perfect. So now I'm going to stop my application and I'm going to start by configuring this. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to install Siri log. So I'm just going to put that not add package serilog.asp.net core and basically this will install serilog and all of the different packages that are needed for me to utilize it so in order for me to see all of the different packages that serilog provide if i type here serilog right now i have installed the serilog asp.net core but as you can see there's a lot of different configurations there is different syncs that we can use we're going to be explaining well, what the what syncs are in a bit but basically, they have a lot of different packages that I can actually utilize inside my application to upgrade my logging mechanism. But we're going to be starting first with the default one. So now that I have Serilog installed, what I want to do is I want to actually inject it into my program.cs. And what I want to do is I want to create some kind of an extension method that's going to allow me to do so. So inside my application, inside my root directory, I'm going to be creating a new folder. I'm going to call it services and once I have that I'm going to create a new class and this class is going to call it app extension and inside this app extension I'm going to be basically configuring Serilog. So first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this static and then I'm going to create my method so it's going to be public static void I'm going to call it Serilog configuration and it's going to take this dot i host builder and it's going to be called host. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize this host in order for me to configure this. That's going to be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to put host, use serilog. And basically, in order for me to utilize serilog, what I need to do is I need to configure two things. First of all, it's going to be the contacts, and then it's going to be the local configuration. So and the use serilog, it will take this action, this types of methods. And here, I'm going to specify my contacts, and I'm going to specify my local configuration. And now I can actually utilize them in order for me to do configure them. So I'm going to start by configuring the local configuration to basically output everything into the console. And in order for me to do that, I'm just going to put local.config.write to, and I'm going to add console, as simple as that. So with this few lines of code here, what I have done is I basically, I was able to configure my application to utilize Serilog, but it's not wired up yet. In order for it to be wired up, I need to go to my program.cs, and I need to inject my extension methods here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put builder.host serilog configuration. And with a single line of code here, basically, I was able to directly utilize my extension method here and I'll be able to use it. So now if I run my application and go to my web browser to execute, we can see we're getting back the response. If I go back to Rider, we can see here that the lock actually started to change. So from basically getting it at the full, the basic output that does not provide. Now I have much more information. Even I have color coding, which allows me to actually see and actually understand better the response and the request that's coming in. I can basically even see the, um, with the color coding, the output of every single request and certain information, etc., etc. So we can see here by just installing Serilog and doing the basic configuration, I'm already having a way better logging experience than before. So now what I want to do is I want to see how we can actually leverage this inside a controller. So we can see here that within a controller, I already have in this example, the logger configured. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to put logger the log information, and I'm going to add here request, or basically I'm going to say weather forecast processing has started for example. So this is one way of doing the logs. There's another way, which is we're going to be utilizing the Serilog logger, and I'm going to put here information, and we're going to be comparing both of them. 
So now I'm going to run this. I'm going to click on execute and we got the information. But if I go back to Serilog and we take a look at the output, so now we can see this is when my application started. And we can see here that both of these information at this moment in time provide me with the same thing. Both of them are producing information onto my screen. So where does it make a difference? What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to change this from a normal uh, response, from a normal return. So I'm going to put var results and I'm going to return this results. But the main difference is going to be here. I'm just going to copy these again and I'm going to copy, put them here. So the first one, I'm going to put the results are and I'm going to attach my results here. I'm going to put the results and I'm going to pass it here. So that's the first one. The second one, I'm just going to copy it and add it there. And here we're just going to be seeing the main differences that Serilog is going to be allow us to have. So now that I have these two in place, now let's run them and see the differences. So I'm just going to run my application again. And now we can see it's running. I'm going to go to my web, to my browser, and I'm going to run it. And we can see we got the same response back. But if I take a look at the logging, that's going to be the main difference. So we can see for the first one, it's only basically giving me the first output of the line and then it's stopping from there. On the other hand, within the second one, which is the serial log one, I was actually able to serialize all of the responses from that result and actually able to see it here. And basically this will allow me to actually debug my code way more faster and much more easier because basically within the serial log output, I'm able to actually see all of the possible results that my request have produced and I'm able to debug it from here rather than me having to create the logic in order for me to print out all of the different uh, information that's needed. So now that we are actually able to see the logs in a much more structured way, let's see what else we can actually utilize it and uh, within the simple implementation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to add the simple try block, try catch block, and I'm going to take this information out, put it inside the try. And here, instead of doing console.write line, what I'm going to put is I'm going to put log the error and I'm going to pass the exception. And I'm going to say here, for example, unable to get forecast. And yeah, that should be it. And I'm going to return, for example, else keep it through. So now let's run this. Actually, this will not throw. So let's create a new exception inside the code. And I'm going to create it here. I'm going to put throw new exception. I'm going to say testing logs, something like that. And let's run the code now. Execute It's going to create a problem right now. That's fine. I'm going to continue now if we go to the console if we go all the way up now we can see this is different so because it's an error we can see how the serial log has handled differently we can see from the information we don't really get any types of color coding but within the error we can see the error one we can see even here that the stack trace that we needed to showcase it's already showcased here we are able to see it as well we were able to see what was the output of our endpoint and what were the responses so we got 500 and basically we got a plain text content type etc etc so we can see it even with the logging up from outside of the box for any types of problem it's really really good so now that we have done that now let's see how we can actually utilize the log to output logs into a file so in order for me to do so i'm gonna go back to adding a new package so i'm just gonna clear this up and i'm gonna utilize almost the same things but what i'm gonna do here is I'm going to add something called syncs and I'm going to put file. So basically syncs is a way that Serilog actually customize itself into what is it going to be producing the information to. So we have console, we have files, we have Kibana if we want to install it later, etc, etc. For now we're taking it simple. So now that we have, I added this here, what now I want to do in order for me to utilize this file information, I'm going to go back to my app extension and I'm going to update it. So I'm going to keep the console one, but I'm going to add another one which is going to be dot write to and i'm going to add here file so once i have a file here it's going to require me to provide some configuration the first thing that i want to do in this example is i'm going to provide first of all the file name so i'm just going to say logs text very simple so now if i run my application and what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the exception that i have here so we can see all of these logs sh uh, showing up and i'm going to run it i'm going to go to my web browser and execute it so I'm going to click on execute and we got the response back. Now, if I go back here, if you notice here on the left, now I have a new file called app logs. And if I open it, we can see here, it was this easy for me to actually export all of the logs of my application into the file. But this is not really very helpful 
because it, although it is like structured and I'm able to see it within a timestamp, it will be much more be better. It will be much better if I'm actually able to see it as JSON. So how can I do that? It's going to be also very easy. I'm going to go back to my app extensions. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new JSON formatter. So I'm just going to say that it's going to output this in a JSON format. And once I have done this and run this again, now let's execute. You can see I'm getting back the response. But now if I go back to Rider and I click on the app logs text, and if you scroll a bit down, we'll be able to see now instead of having it as normal text, my, my actual logs are actually coming now in a JSON format, which allows me to process it and serialize it the way I want to extract information, feed it into different systems, etc. etc. All of that is being done directly through my configuration of my serial log. Okay, great. So now we, with that, so what else we can do out of this simple implementation? We can actually have a nice feature here where I can actually create logs for every single day and serial log will take the responsibility from me in order for it to, con to make sure that based on a certain days or basically every day it will create a new file with a timestamp on it and it would actually add the logs to it. And you might think it can be this complicated, but it's actually not. So and the way that I do it here is basically I just add a dash and then after this, what I do is I add the following. So we can see here I have a lot of information, but the one that I'm looking forward to is this one, rolling intervals. So if I click on that, it's going to now provide me with an option to specify what is the rolling interval that I want. I want to create a new log file every day, every hour, and for infinity, every minute, every month, every year. So for now, I'm just going to make it every day. And in order for me to basically have a more structured logging rather than directly on my road of my application, I'm just going to create a new folder called logs and add everything there. So now if I run my application and I want to want to focus here on the left hand side after I execute certain actions. So now if I run it, I go back to my web browser, click on execute multiple times, click on execute, execute multiple times. You can see the response. Now, if I go back to Rider, we can see automatically on the left hand side, I have a folder called logs and inside of it, I have a file called app logs. I have a certain timestamp. And if I open it, I have the logs for my application currently showing all the way here. And I was able to do all of this extra configuration on my logs by basically configuring three lines of code here, as well as attaching it to my program.cs on top of any configuration that I need to do inside my controller, which I'll have to do either way. So this is how powerful serial log is and how easy it is in order for us to integrate within our web APIs and, uh, and web applications. So this has been a very quick intro about serial log and simple implementation within our .NET web API. There's going to be future video about taking this a step further, integrating with different third parties, utilizing, for example, Kibana, utilize, for example, dashboards in order for us to view this data and extract it, etc, etc. But this just has been a quick introduction about serial log and structured logging. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.